Hello and welcome. I'm Patrick from Song Coast Worlds and I'm here today with you to share a series. The series is called The Power of Sovereign Choice. Sovereign choice is really something that has been, even for me, very difficult over the last couple of months and weeks. So I felt it's something beautiful to share with you. What means sovereign choice is something we're going to look at today and I share with you eight points that stop us from being in that sovereign choice and that power to actually express it. But to start off today with, I want to share a little bit of flute with you to create a space for us all to enjoy what is coming to you. Whatever I'm sharing with you is for you to enjoy, to be inspired, to find your resonance. And better still, if you start sharing with me what you're feeling about it. The second part of this series will be about how to release, how to shift, and how to really step into your power of sovereign choice. And the last part of this series will be about how to embody it. So let us get ready and tune in to that sacred space of the power of sovereign choice. Let us begin. What is sovereign choice and how do you come into this place? We, most of us, are actually experiencing at this moment often a conflict that what we're doing, what we're saying doesn't feel true within ourselves. So on some level we're feeling out of integrity and out of congruence and we wonder if that truth on the outside is the truth that we have within and maybe very much so for many of us there will be a conflict on the outside and on the inside the sovereign choice however lies within and many of us more and more experiencing that lack of truly making that choice that is our own truth for me many years ago it started with me noticing there were certain things I couldn't do. I couldn't work with certain industries. I couldn't really align to certain ideas because they didn't feel true within myself anymore. And many of you are in this position for quite some time. The more we ignore it and the more we try to resist, the more it persists, just like with many things. So sovereign actually means the truth within that can be expressed from the power of your heart consciousness and the courage of your heart. So this is the power of sovereign choice. Now I have found there are eight main points that hold us back which is the content of this first little talk with you today. And so just listen and feel what it feels like to you and see what resonates. There might be one or two points that are in your life and you feel this is a point that really holds me back. This is where I would like to work on. The first of the eight is of course our own ego. Now ego is a funny thing. The yogis tell us to let the ego go. Eckhart Tolle talks about releasing the ego. But for most of us it's not so easy because we're living in a world where there is a lot of fear. Fear of change, fear of letting go, fear of not being able to control, fear of, of security that maybe doesn't exist. So for most of us, on some level, the ego can play a huge role. And the ego is not your truth. The ego 
is your fear body that is actually stopping us and trying to comply and compromise and it doesn't make us happy. So this is number one. The second point is actually the mass consciousness. So in the mass consciousness, we are, we are feeling harm, we are feeling guilt, we are feeling shame, we are feeling blame. And of course, we are being fed with many negative things. So in a way that mass consciousness holds us in a pain and in a conflict that is not even ours. And the more we are exposed to that mass consciousness energetically, and of course in a physical sense, the more it's difficult to be sovereign. And of course the mass consciousness is also about being normal. I remember as a child it was very difficult, normal. I was always wondering what that was. And maybe we are all not normal, because what does it really mean to be normal? So we're all kind of stereotypes of something that doesn't really resonate with ourselves. The third point that holds us back is all the addictions. And I'm not only talking about drugs and alcohol here. I am talking about addictions to false truth, to things that we are told are like that, but they are not. For instance, I take a concept of the world. When we talk about the first, the second, and the third world, we believe that the third world is the developing world. But when this was created, this terminology, it was during a time of the Cold War. And in the Cold War, it was simply the first world was the capitalist world, the second world were the communists, and third world was the rest of the world. So we have, in a way, believed in this, and that is also limiting the way we are thinking and the way we are making our choices, and more so, it is keeping us in an addiction. We, we are literally addicted to these concepts. The fourth one is the pain body. I have taken this concept from Eckhart Tolle because I love it. It's just beautiful. The pain body is an emotional expression of the ego, if you wish. And the pain body has to do with how, what emotions we have carried over the years within ourselves that take us back to pain, physically, emotionally, mentally, on all levels. But the pain body, again, also linking into that mass consciousness that we've been talking about before. The fifth point that is holding us back is separation. Now, the biggest separation is actually the separation from ourselves. And this is really what's happening, what we are feeling in this awakening process. The truth that is within is somehow there, but we are separated and we are separated from many other things. The sixth point that is holding us back in our sovereign choice is the rational and linear thinking, because it's a limitation. If we are only thinking about the rationalities, then we are missing out on maybe 90% of the choices that we may have. And the same with the linear. We know today about quantum space and the work of Joe Dispenza and many other people and Dr. Bruce Lipton. And we know that the rational and linear is either not true or only a little small part of what is really available to us in a world of quantum possibilities and choices. The seventh is negative thinking and negative self-talk. And this is also something very, very common. And this is not something that you are in a way controlling. This is just something that's happening. For instance, we were looking for a perfect spot. And you keep on thinking, oh, maybe this is better. No, this is not good. Now there's the wrong light. Surely you can improve a situation by making many considerations. But if you become negative and self-doubting, we may never make this video. And maybe you have many experiences of that. And here comes the eighth point that is holding us back from 
being in that sovereign choice and the power of using it. And this is the lack of imagination. So for most of us, imagination is not something that's our daily praxis, simply because we're not used to it. And simply because we're not exposed to the mystic and to the quantum space. When we can imagine, we step outside the limitations, and of course in our case, stepping into the truth and the infinite possibilities of our truth within. So here is the first part of the series. These were the things that are in between. So I'm very curious to know what is it for you? What does it mean to you? Which one of the eight are maybe more dominant? Maybe we can find out who and how you are really stuck in one of those eight holding backs to your power of sovereign choice. For today, thank you very much. Thanking Ceci for being behind the camera, making sure it all works perfectly. Thank you to this beautiful place of Anna Kaspi, Kaspi and its beautiful owners who make sure that it always looks spectacular. Thank you to the beautiful soundscape of the jungle. And I see you for the second one soon.